Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to have a discussion with Priscilla Kuma. She's a registered nurse in the US, a YouTuber, and she runs a consultancy that helps in processing all the necessary documents needed for foreign nurses who want to work in the US. And so if you're interested in knowing more about Priscilla and her consultancy and how to study in the US as a nurse or how to migrate into the US as a nurse, and work there as a nurse. Please follow her, subscribe to her YouTube channel. The name is Priscilla Kuma, subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Esther Sari. Share with family and friends. Feel free to comment in the comment section of this video. We'll be glad to answer all your questions. Let's jump into the interview with Priscilla Kuma. Welcome Priscilla. Can you please introduce yourself? Very much, Esther. I'm so glad to be here. You were on my channel a year ago, yes. and today I'm back on your channel. My name exactly. is yeah. my name is Priscilla Kuma. I'm a registered nurse. I originally come from Ghana, yeah. and I am a U.S. citizen. I live in the U.S. I live in New York State. I'm a nursing YouTuber, and I'm the lead consultant of USRN Party Council. Beautiful profile. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel? Okay, so I when I came to the US before I did my nursing process to be able to work here, a little bit of background. So I have I studied in University of Ghana where I was a nursing student. I worked in Ghana for years before I came to America via my husband um, Faza visa CR1 visa, and. I did everything concerning my nursing career in the US before, okay. I, began, before I began practicing as a registered nurse here. And uh, it was very hectic for me. I didn't have any reference point. I didn't have any idea where to start from. But finally, I figured it out and I was able to do it. So I said to myself, there's somebody who will be in my situation as well who didn't know where to start from and who didn't have any reference point, who didn't have anybody who is from Ghana who is sharing their journey about the US RN journey. And I decided to put up a YouTube channel, and uh, that is how my channel came to be. Oh, yes, I know about you. I followed you. I, I subscribe to your YouTube channel. I watch your videos. They are very inspiring. And then I, all I can say is keep on giving us informative videos. And so you mentioned in your intro that you have a consultancy. What is your consultancy all about? Oh, it's called US RN Pathway Council. As I said before, it's just to guide and coach people. It's a processing firm. It's a processing firm that helps process your forms to be able to work in the US if you did not school in US. Anybody who schooled outside the US, before you can come and work in the US, you need to have your credit evaluated. And if you want to school in the US, too, you need to have your courses evaluated before you can work or school in the US. And as I said, I didn't have any reference points, but I yeah. figured it out and I've been helping people behind doors and uh, so many people are coming in for help and I'm just one person. I have a lot of responsibilities on my plate. I have, <laughs> yeah, a, full -time job. I have a full time job, I have a full time family, I have other businesses I'm running and I do not have time to help nobody. So I set up a team and um, they've been helping me. Some of us are in the US and the rest of the team are in Ghana and we help people. So we have a Facebook page call USRM Pathway Consult. We have a Telegram group. There's a link all over on social media and the things we do. And uh, I realized there's a need in Africa. Um, the Asians have a company in the Philippines that help them out, but there's nothing like this in Africa. So we are, extending oh, okay. our, we are extending our help to those in Nigeria, Kenya, anywhere. They can reach out to us, reach out to us so far as they can do their process. Yes. And you, Esther, I want to commend you on your YouTube channel. Uh, you and I began this journey not too long ago. It's become our full-time job. We are helping, we are literally helping saving lives and I'm proud of what you're doing. I, uh, I, I always share your videos and uh, I'm glad people are following and they are doing what, we're, what they're supposed to do. And you forgot to introduce me as your mates. You and I went to school. <laughs> we went to a lot of girls back in whole water region, West Africa, Ghana. And we yeah. went to the city of Ghana together. So you and I have known each other for more than 17 years, I should say. More than 17 years, exactly. Yeah. And we all live in abroad, aside in Germany, and as you all know, I'm in New York State. So yeah, over to you, Esther. <laughs> Thank you, Pusla. 
Um, my next question is, nurses in the U.S. well paid. Hmm. Hmm. Well paid is very relative. You know I'm all about the money. You know I love money. So Of course, I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have the money. So it's more about the money if you have to go get it. So um, money and being well paid is relative. What you call well paid might not be what I call well paid. But there's so many factors that affect one's salary, the location where you live, the state in which you are, and the city in which you live in inside that state. So if you take a state like California, a state of New York State, and you live in New York City, or you live in Beverly Hills, or you live around Hollywood and all that, the taxes will be very high over there. So the jobs will pay you very high to match up the cost of living. But for somebody who lives outskirts, the salary would be a little bit lower to match your cost of living. How much you are paying mortgage or rent over there will not be how much you are paying. So relatively, um, American nurses are well paid worldwide. They are one of the top well paid countries people want to be in. Number one is Luxembourg. I did a video on my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, the name is Crystal Kuma RN. And Esther is going to leave the link below. You can subscribe to my channel and watch more nursing migration content and anything else. So yeah, America pays nurses well. The job is not easy. It is stressful. But those who are well paid among all nurses are travel nurses or agency nurses. They travel on contract basis and work 13 weeks, 12 weeks and move around, either around where they live or outside the state they live. And that is where the money is. They can make as high as $5,000 to $10,000 a week. Those were the COVID prices. They've come down a little bit, but yeah, they are well paid generally. So in case someone back home or back in Africa or Asia, Philippines, want to travel to the U.S. as a nurse, a foreign nurse. Are there agencies that recruit these people apart from your agency? Yes. So let me clarify. Ours is a processing firm. We are not an agency. We help okay. process the paperwork. We help give you the states to choose, the forms to fill out, the, the board to apply to. We take your forms to your school and a nursing council and all that stuff. Yes. So it's a processing firm, documentation processing firm. But we, and after you pass the NCLEX, which is a nursing licensure, then we link you to recruiters in the US to get you a job. Yes, there are so many recruiting agencies in Ghana and other African countries. On top of my head, I can mention about three. There's Avant, there's OGP, there's Ogredi Python, there's Adavia, there's Medpro. There are so many agencies. But those agencies have their pros and cons. Most people go with them because they sponsor part of your preparation to take the licensure and bring you over and find you a job. But what they don't know is that you'll be bonded to them for two to three years of your life because they invested in you. The exam she writes in South Africa, and that's the only center in Africa, or you go to India and Asia to write it. So they sponsor your trip to the place, the hotel and flight and all that to the US, then you'll be bonded to them. Some of the agencies have direct hire, but they are very few. Direct hire means that They'll bring it to the US, give it to the hospital, and you become a staff of the hospital and they wash their hands off your case. But most of them have invested in you. If there's a direct hire, you will pay more of all your own processing stuff. But if you're going to be bonded to them, they'll pay a lot and you will pay a little bit. But if you want to do it as a self, as an individual, self sponsorship, you're doing your own thing, paying from your own pocket, then you'd have to follow the routes I'm about to talk about. That is what you have to do. It's the same thing the agencies will do for you. But if you don't have the money, that's why that's when you reach out to the agencies, sign a contract and go with them. So okay, so is this what that's where your consultancy comes in, if I exactly. understand you well. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Can you explain the process then? Okay. So as I said, if you didn't school in the US, you need to have your credential development. And there are so many credential evaluation companies. So it's, it's your job to know which one to use. But before you find your credential evaluation company, you want to decide the states in America you want to live. There are 50 states. You want to look at the states that would favor you. You can't just choose any state. That's when we come in and show you the right states to choose. You can't choose any state because some of them require you to have a social security number. Some of them require you to have a house address. And if you don't live here, you can't have that. So you want to choose a state. Yeah, you want to see a state that doesn't require those things. So when you are outside the US, you choose a state that doesn't require social security and all that. So you go to that state board of nursing, just go into Google, type California State Board of Nursing, New York State Board of Nursing, 
look at the requirements for a foreign educated nurse because that's what you are. Or yeah. sometimes they call it international nurse. Look at the require look at the requirements and they will mention the credential evaluation company you have to use. So two states look at the requirements for a foreign nurse and go to the credential evaluation they mention. If they say use CGFNS, Commission for Graduate Foreign Nurses, they do evaluation and they are big time. They do for Ghana, uh, sorry, they do for US, Canada, Australia, and many other countries. So if the, if the state says go with CGFNS, then you go to CGFNS's website. You type okay. in CGFNS into Google, it goes to their website and look for the requirement for a foreign educated nurse. Whatever they say there, that is the information you need. Then you supply all the, you create an online account with the credential evaluation service. You pay the amounts they state over there. The CGFNS pays about $390. There's another one called ERES. They, they take $480. So you want to pay that before they release the forms to you. The forms are customized. So you cannot run photocopy. You cannot give it to somebody. When you create a profile, the, the details you input on the profile appear on the form. So by the time you're, you get access to the form, your name, your date of birth, your email, and all this, so I cannot give you a my form because it has my details on it. And the, the forms have numbers and barcodes. Oh, okay. Yes. So you take the form, you fill the tab, applicant. Then you take one to wherever you had your nursing education. If you went to nursing training college, if you went to university, you could take it to the nursing school of nursing and they'll fill it out for you. Then they would mail it via career service, DHL, FedEx, back to the credential evaluation service. You take one to nursing council of your country. So you take it to NMC Ghana, or if you're watching from Kenya, Tanzania, Namibia, thank you all my new subscribers from all those countries. You've been watching me and I'm really grateful. You take it to the council, the nursing council of your country. They will also endorse it, write all the courses you took. The clinical hours have to be a number. And they'll also mail it back using the career service. So you'll be tracking wherever your documents have gotten to. When the CGFNS says your documents have arrived, they update that. You can't even call them and get to them. They are so hard to get to. So you have to check in your account and see the stage your documents are. After they'll generate a report saying that your education is comparable to that of the US. That means it meets, it meets the American standard. Yeah, it's equivalent, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Equivalent, that's right. Then they take it and send it to the board of nursing you chose. So if you chose California or you chose New York, then they send it to that board of nursing. The board of nursing will look at the reports and give you the go at it. And they call, they call that ATT, attestation to test. The attestation to the test is just basically, you're good to go. Go and register and take the licensure. And um, you the body that con con conducts the test is called Pearson VUE. So now you go to Pearson VUE's website, then you, rec um, you, you register over there and pay the amount. If you are writing in the US, it's $200. If you are writing outside the US, I'm told it's between $250 to $350. You go to India or you go to um, India or you go to um, South Africa and take the test over there. Then in 48 hours, your results are in. Then uh, you qualify to be a RN for America, you register nurse in America, then you find a job. So if you're outside the US, then you find recruiters and present your results to them. Two types of recruiters. One will sponsor you to go to the NCLEX. The other one would uh, is waiting for you to just show up with them and say, I have my results. I'm a registered nurse and they will take you. Then you have the bargaining power and say that, how much are you offering me? This one might offer you $40, this one might offer you $35, but because you have the license, you want to go with the higher one. But if they invest in you, whatever hospital they find you, whatever states they find for you, you need to go because they invested in you. But if you invested in yourself, you have the bargaining power. So that's basically what you do to become a US nurse. And what is NCLEX? I've heard you mention NCLEX, NCLEX in your videos. What is NCLEX? NCLEX is the licensure you take before you can be become a nurse in the US. Ghana also has licensure. Nursing is a professional body that has issue licenses. Yeah. So before you can practice as a nurse, you have to have an active pin, a license number to practice. If not, you are illegal. So NCLEX is the name of the exams you take to practice in the US. It's the same you take in Canada, I think Australia and a few countries too. So is it the exams you mentioned that you can take in the in the in South Africa or India? Yes. yes. Because you don't have American visa, you live in Africa, 
there, there's only one center you can go and take it. It's a computer-based test. So the only center in Africa happens to be in South Africa. There's none in West Africa. There's none elsewhere. It's just in South Africa for the whole of Africa, which is bad. That's quite a process. But how long can this process take? OK. It also depends on how fast a student you are. You learn very fast. And number two, how, how fast your processing takes. If your documents come forth, your school endorses it for you quickly. Nursing council as a country, country endorses it quickly. And there's no quickly there. You can't rush the process when it comes to the, the Where we come from, we cannot rush the process. You go to the office, and the, the, the dean is gone to market. The manager is gone to the farm and say, go and come to the funeral. So you go back and forth. That is when US RM party consult comes in. Yeah, I understand you perfectly well. And sometimes you have petty mistakes. Yeah. You, for instance, you are Kuma with H at the end. Some other people write it without H. There's Mensa with H without H. And sometimes these names can be complicated in terms of when whoever is typing behind a computer decides to delete H or add H to your name, for instance, then you have to restart the process again. I can relate to that a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. when it comes to us, we have our familiar faces that we do the speed up the process for you. And one stage can delay you for at least a year. So if you find somebody who can speed up the process for you, then that is good. So because we go with a number of maybe five nurses and and those we know who to go to, we know the tutor to go to, or the dean to go to. We don't go and as, a, as an individual, you wait in the queue and all that. So if you want to cut that stress, if you live outside the US, we can help you get that document fast. If you live in Tamale, you can't come down to Accra because the whole of Ghana, we have only one nursing and midwife council in Ghana and it's in Accra. So if you live in Tamale or somewhere, you don't want to be coming down. What if you come down and the person is going for a funeral? Are you going to go and come back? We can handle that for you at a good fee. So find our consult and reach out to us. May I ask how much do you take? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> That's okay with you. That's fine. I said I was doing this pro bono. I was doing this for so long for people for free. And it's a lot of work. As I said, full-time job and a whole lot. So just for a talk, talking, this is like a giving back to society, to society non-profit, just to help people out. Because most people finish nursing school in Ghana and they are home waiting for him. And they, they've been home for over a year and they don't have a job. And those working take home peanuts. And America need nurses. There's shortage of nurses. COVID happened and it became worse. So what do we take? We take just small $300. As I'm speaking today, when we recorded this video, if you convert $300, it should be around three times eight. So it should be 2,400 Yes, that's what we take. And you don't need to pay all that $300 upfront. You pay $50 non-refundable. Then whenever you get a 250, we have a timeline, then you pay the 250. Or you take the licensure. We're not gonna let you take the licensure and run away with that, that money. So $300 is what we take, 2,400 depending on the estimate rate of the day you are paying to us. I think that is a cool amount, I mean. It is. Because the processes involved in getting these certificates back in Ghana is quite serious. Yeah. As I'm in Germany, I needed some certificates, some, and I it's always back and forth, back and forth with so many stories. Sometimes I get angry, but very, there's nothing I can do about it, you know. And so, if there's somebody who can come in between and help to fast track this process, why not? And the money is there. Why not pay this two thousand four hundred or so, or three? Let's make it three hundred euro um, dollars. And then your life, you 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 save yourself all the stress. Yeah. So let's continue. Is it, to, is it possible to study nursing in the US as a foreigner? Yeah, it's possible to study nursing in the US as an, as an international student. But yeah. the process, as usual, nothing comes easy. The process is a little bit cumbersome. So there are two types of nurses. Either you're already a nurse and you want to upgrade. You have yeah. a diploma and you want to get your BSN. They require you to have an active pin. You should be a registered nurse before you apply. Then they will waive some of the courses for you before you can join and finish. If you are starting from, you finish high school or you just want to change your career, you as a let's say you want to become a nursing student. Oh, yeah. You have to take the SAT. That is what you need to take before you enter, enter into nursing school. 
they call something prerequisites. <clears throat> there are yeah. some courses mm -hmm. that you have to go and do and put them together, biology, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, you do all those courses, put them together and apply to an, a university first. Get admission into the university first, do some requirements courses the first few years before you apply and before you finally get access into the School of Nursing. The School of Nursing is in the university, so you have to get admission to the university first. I shared okay. a video about nursing school in America and they can go watch it on my channel if they want more details. Are the fees very high or? Oh yes. Because I had, a, I had a, an interview with one other lady, she's called Becky in the UK. And according to her, the fees, nursing fees in the UK are quite high. Yeah, schooling abroad is expensive. It's very high. A friend is doing a 10 month top up because it's already a diploma. He mm -hmm. wants to get his bachelor's degree. And the fees is $27,000 for a 10 month top up. Luckily for him, he already dis he's already a nurse. So some of the courses were have been longer than 10 months. And also, his job was willing to give him a little percentage because he lives in the US and works here. So he got it down a little bit, but he still has a lot to pay. I think he had about ten to seventeen thousand to pay by himself. So schooling here is expensive, and that's just ten months. So if you are doing it for four years, BSN, and those courses don't give scholarship. Just as law school, you can have scholarship and those yeah. courses give scholarship. But when you enter into the system, there are some scholarships that you might find whilst you are a student in the system that you might chance upon. Price expensive, very. Interesting. Will you recommend or will you encourage anybody, a foreigner living somewhere in Ghana or in Philippines, in Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, who want to migrate as a foreigner or come and study in the US as a nurse? Will you encourage that? Yes. Links by yes. The capital is highlighted and underlined. Yes. Because number one, the system works. When you work hard, work smart, you get what you want. But the job is not easy. Life abroad is not easy. I understand. It's not easy. Life abroad is not easy. Nobody is easy. You can't have access to what you want. So living abroad is a strong minded. You need to be strong with to be able to do it. But look at Be that focused, side, determined. Yeah. But looking at the cost of living, the things happening back in Africa, in Africa, bad leadership, bad governance, and all the things, you want to get your kids out of the system that works. You want to give your kids a good foundation, a good educational system, where there, there are good roads, good education, good healthcare, good water access to the basic things you need. Exactly, good standard of living. You can go for vacations. And... Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So I would, I would recommend that. I would need to Anybody who calls it let them know that living abroad is not easy. Don't look at our beautiful people and think that you base our life. You go left or right, you come to the city, you come to the you come home, and you, you are eating in your car, and you go back to the city. I don't want to do that. Living abroad is not easy. So, Prisla, do you have some conclusion, concluding remarks? Yes. So thank you very much, Esther, for having me. Esther is a personal friend, so we're going to just back door, of course. I want to um, recommend Esther on all that she's done. Esther and Prince, of course, she's doing the two masters, and I'm very proud of her journey. <laughs> thank you. I'm very proud of her journey so far. I'm also yeah, so yeah. proud of you. You've done so well. I mean, I know part of your private life, and I can say you're a strong lady. You're, you're... You've done so well for yourself. We've been doing this, giving this information out for you, to you for free. Kindly subscribe to our channel. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot of work. It's a full time. It's a lot of work, exactly. Subscribe to my channel. My name is Crystal. Come on, Aaron. That is the same name. I have one on my Instagram, Facebook, Crystal Lexi Kuma. And I have a WhatsApp number. They can reach me for if they want to work in the US or work with the consults. They can show you the way. And the WhatsApp number, if you are in Ghana, is 020-936-2453. If you are outside, you want to use plus 233-20-936-2453. You want to do the plus 233, the, the area code for Ghana, before you add the 20. And you can email me as usrn 
pathwayconsult at gmail.com. Thank you very much for having me, Esther. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the all the thank you for all the information you've given us. Very important. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. My name is Esther Sari, and that's Priscilla Kuma from the US, a registered nurse in the US. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>